Um, so we're in early May and we're in sort of swarming season and we did a little uh, demo a little while ago on Pagden as a swarm control method, which is moving hives horizontally aside. Thought we might do a, a different method today, which is the snail growth method, which is really good in a couple of senses because it's very efficient on kit. Basically all you need is just one extra brood box. You don't need the whole hive but you also need one of these snail growth boards. Now, snail growth boards is basically just a crown board, but there's mesh to stop the bees getting through, but it's got a lot of these little doors, both above and below the divider, on three sides. Now, used in the full method, snail growth means opening these doors in a, in a fixed sequence at fixed time scales to balance the colony up between the upper and lower boxes that you end up with. That's quite time consuming and fairly complicated. You can, at its very simplest, use it as a divider board and just open an upper entrance at the back with the colony that you split. So I'm gonna show you how that way works. It's not strictly a snail growth full maneuver, but hey, it works, um, vertical split. So I'll put that aside for a moment. This is my new brew box, which would most probably be full of uh, foundation. I've just got whatever's in it at the moment. But this is the new box that's going to go on the bottom with the queen in it and no queen cells. This is the original hive. So we're going to strip that down like you would normally. We're going to take the supers off. In this case, I'm going to take the supers off slightly separately because I'm going to reassemble them slightly differently. So this is my original colony, um, and I'm going to go through it. I've got a mind that it's already at the point where it's got queen cells, so I've got all my stuff ready. So I'm going to go through, oh yes, I've found queen cells. I probably want to thin those queen cells down to one, but the first thing I want to do is maybe find the queen, find the queen, check the frame she's on, it's got absolutely no queen cells on it, get it out of the way and get her to safety and that's going to be my new lower box. This box, now I've got the queen out of the way, I'm going to go through, thin it down to the one queen cell that I want and I can move it out of the way. So this box can now go over there with the one queen cell. I might put a, um, a drawing pin in the frame that I've left the queen cell on. Now this box that's got the queen in it, probably foundation, is going to go on the floor. All the flying bees are going to come back to this box. Meanwhile, I've got most of the brood and most of the uh, uh, nurse bees will stay in that box. Now my snail grow board, actually, super on first. Because I've got two supers, I'm just going to split the supers between the boxes. My snail grow board goes on top with a top entrance open at the back. So all the other entrances are closed. Sorry, top entrance at the back. All the other entrances are closed. So now, when I put this new box on, any bees that hatch out are going to know this is the way in and out of home. All the brood, all the nurse bees in there. Sooner or later there's going to be a queen in here, so I might as well put the queen excluder back on. And the other super I've got is going to go in there. Advantages of this method, really kit efficient. All I needed was the brew box. Disadvantages of this method, um, every time I want to check the bottom box, I've got to take the whole top box off. And sometimes this box, if they both end up a strong colony, could end up really tall and it's a bit of a faff to do all that. Hello. Um, so that's one of the disadvantages of it. Don't stop me. Um, you will need in the bottom box to check it that the queen's okay. As always, if you really don't want her to abscond, you could put a queen excluder in for a couple of days, but only for a couple of days. In the upper box, they could still, upper brood box, they could still raise more queen cells. So you'll need to go through about four days afterwards. 
and make sure you're only back to probably one queen cell if that's your choice. This box you should try not to disturb while the queen's, um, especially when the queen's sort of coming out and mating, try and avoid it. So it's a bit of a balance trying to find a time to check the lower colony, but leave the top colony alone as much as you can. It's an alternative method. It works really well. It uses minimal kit. I'd say the main thing is just that smell.